What are you doing? I'm trying to reverse the linked list, Shaktiman. But you don't even know how to type. Oh, really? But how can I type faster and better, Shaktiman? <laughs> I am glad you asked. Typing speed doesn't even matter for software engineers. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen any senior software engineer looking at their keyboard while typing? Certainly not. Well, there might be exceptions though, but you get the idea. Let's do the math and see how it can impact a software engineer in the long term. So let's consider an engineer who does 50 words per minute. An average word length is around four characters. So as far as the coding is concerned, it becomes around 200 characters per minute. But for the sake of simplicity, let's stick to like words per minute. The engineer types for five hours a day, five days a week, and over the course of five years, the total words typed are around 19.5 million. If that speed was 100 words per minute, these results would have been doubled, which is 38 million words, which in theory means that engineer is twice as fast. And this is just for the coding side. Engineers are more often than not writing docs, emails and whatnot. So the real impact is even huge. Now that we know it matters for us, let's see the types of typing that I have seen people doing. Well, the most important thing that affects typing is the relative positioning of the fingers and the hand from the keyboard. And based on that, I have classified typing in four broader types. The first one is the freestyle typing or typing from the eyes, as I like to call it. It's like how computer processors work, jumping between processes or threads so quickly that it gives an illusion of multi-threading. In this case, eyes are switching between the screen and the keyboard very quickly and the fingers are just randomly placed. Then we have the tabla typing. Tabla is, it, it means drum. Uh, it's also known as hunt and peck typing. So this is where the person has lifted their hands up and only use index finger for the typing. Feels like a drummer. Well, third, we have the low tabla typing, which in essence is similar to the previous one, but here people keep their hands very close to the keyboard and still use one finger for the typing, which is usually the middle finger. Oops, the index finger, I mean. And the last one is of course the standard technique, with all eight fingers placed on the home row. With that, let's see how I reached the speed I have today. I used to be in this category of freestyle typing in the first year of my college and could barely manage 25 words per minute. I realized that I cannot go like that and it needs to change. So I spent my first year vacation learning to type using a software called Typing Master. I was practicing every day whenever I got time and by the beginning of the next semester, I could type in around 40 words per minute with the proper technique. But I was still struggling with the numbers and the special characters on the right because I didn't bother training for them in the software. My muscle memory even for the other characters got developed over time because of coding. I started with the regular keyboards and then I got Microsoft's ergonomic keyboard which forced me in using the correct fingers for the alphabets. And then I moved on to the mechanical keyboard with blue keys, then moved to a split keyboard with brown keys. Uh, that's when I uh, reached around 90 words per minute and then finally moved to a custom keyboard with silver keys and the max I did is 139 words per minute, which is crazy. Let's see the things that affect typing speed. Well, the first one is the keyboard layout type. QWERTY layout is the most famous and most common, uh, and the, most of the discussion today is based on that. But if you wanna go crazy, you can get the Dvorak layout. Dvorak is a layout where the most frequently used keys are placed in the home row, including all the five vowels. But beware, it will become super hard for you to come back to QWERTY because uh, it would mean you need to retrain the muscle memory. And the same argument holds for the other way around as well. The other problem is that you cannot take your keyboard everywhere with you. So for lean back sofa sessions, you will have a hard time using your QWERTY laptop. But the next one is sitting posture. I am really not sure how it affects the typing. For me, what does affect the typing is how far my elbows are. The closer the elbows, the more easier I find it to type. 
we will see in a moment uh, why this affects typing in the split keyboard section. When, then the next is wrist rest. It's very useful for keyboards which have a decent height, which in my case is true. If I don't use a wrist rest, my wrists will not have a flat vertical angle and it will be problematic. I was earlier using a cushion based wrist, but those tend to wear out quickly. So I switched to a wooden wrist. Let's talk about keyboard incline. Well, this is something a lot of folks overlook. Your keyboard should be naturally inclined so that the angle of the wrists is flat. In my case, I got a keyboard which was slightly more inclined than the one that I have currently. And within a day, I started getting wrist pain and I had to return it. The current one is just so natural. Let's talk about split or ergonomic keyboard. The great benefit of a split keyboard is that it helps to maintain a flat horizontal angle of the wrists. Having said that, it depends a lot on where you keep your elbows. It only helps when your elbows are far apart. But if your elbows are any way closer, you practically don't even need a split keyboard. The other benefit of using a split keyboard is that it forces you to follow the recommended finger positioning. Let's talk about key switches. There are many different kinds of switches available, primarily two. The one is the shell membrane. Uh, usually most of the laptops have it by default. Almost all the soft buttons like on remote controls, game pads are also based on shell membrane. The other one is mechanical switches. We won't go into the differences, but you can check out the link in the description. The primary mechanical ones are blue, brown and red. We can go very deep into it and start to nitpick, but at the end of the day, it falls on you. I tried blue switches. They require a little more force and they are very clicky. Brown keys had a very flat feel. They are good for typing though. But since I started using these silver keys, my typing speed has taken a minor jump there. These switches are very smooth and have a very short travel and they sound great as well. The link is in the description if you want to buy, go ahead. Let's talk about keycaps. There are lots of different keycaps available out there as well. I am not sure if they can really affect typing speed, but they can for sure have some impact on the typing experience. Two parameters here. One is the material and the other one is the shape or the profile of the keycap. The silver lining here is that if you want the keys to show the backlit, then you go with the PBT keys, which can wear off eventually. Otherwise, prefer the double shot keys as they last longest and don't wear off. Well, there is no rule of thumb. The setup that works for me might not work for you. So keep on exploring until you find the most appropriate one. Or the other way to look at it is, if you are not facing any problem with a shell membrane keyboard, then maybe you're fine. Just stick with that and save the money. Okay, how to improve typing speed? If you need one answer, practice. That is, enforce standard typing technique on whatever you type. Well, close this video, you are done. Well, this is easier said than done. So first you should get a typing software. In the modern times, I believe Type Eraser is probably the most wholesome. I really like the feature where it starts with the home row, even without the alphabets, just so your fingers first start to build some muscle memory of just the placement and the alphabets come later. Second, think wisely about skipping the number characters when you're done with the alphabets. I would recommend to keep going on with your typing software even after the primary alphabets are done. I stopped there and I still sometimes regret it. Third, a small tip I have for you is that you should definitely adopt BIM bindings for any ID that you're using. The most important benefit is that code navigation. Since your right hand fingers are already placed on JKL, which are the same keys used by Vim to navigate the code. And I made a dedicated video on that, so you can go through that. Fun fact is that JKL navigation can also be enabled in Gmail, and you don't even need to use a mouse for going through your emails. Quite surprising, right? So now you know. Sorry, Shaktiman. Not just her. Every software engineer should know typing and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is Shaktiman signing off.